Reintroducing an animal is a great way to undo the damages that humans have done, as humans are usually one of the main factors behind local extinctions. When a reintroduction goes well, it's great news for the species, but unfortunately some animal reintroductions fail. In some cases, the animal's previous range has changed so much that it's unable to survive there, and of course some reintroduced animals are poached, and some are taken out by disease and traffic collisions. For a reintroduction to go well, it needs to be managed very thoroughly, and the animals need to be monitored at all stages of the process. If these steps are not taken, the reintroduction will fail, and I have been over a few cases such as this before. There are many more interesting stories such as the ones I featured in this video, and I will be going through just a few of them today. We'll start off with a very interesting member of the bovid family, and this animal is adapted to very cold conditions. The musk ox has quite a confusing name, as it's not very closely related to oxen. Instead, the musk ox is more closely related to goats and sheep, and its closest relatives are thought to be the gorals. Musk ox are very stocky and powerful creatures, and they need to be to survive in their natural habitat. These mammals are found in the Arctic, and they roam the tundra in search of roots, mosses, and lichen. While feeding, they do have to look out for predators, as they are targeted by wolves and bears. Today, the majority of musk ox are found in northern North America, but these animals used to have a much larger range. They used to be found over large parts of Eurasia, but they disappeared here over 3,000 years ago. It's believed that their decline was due down to a changing climate, and overhunting could have also played a role. In North America, the Alaskan population was wiped out in the late 19th or 20th century, and this meant that these animals were only found in a relatively small area. Because of this, and also because of a few fossil finds, plans were put in place to reintroduce these animals across their former range, and this included Norway and Alaska. In Alaska, the reintroduction was a success, and plans to reintroduce the musk ox started in 1930. The plan was to domesticate the animals, and then find profitable ways to use them. At first, 34 of these animals were captured in Greenland, and then they were transported to Norway and New York. Soon after, they made their way to Fairbanks, and a suitable place to reintroduce these animals was found soon after. In 1935 and 1936, they were transported to a large island in the Bering Sea, and over the following decades, they thrived there. During the 1960s, this population was reintroduced into other parts of Alaska, and some of these animals were even taken to Russia. It's fair to say that the reintroduction into Alaska went amazingly well, but it was a different story in Europe. Some of these animals were introduced into a mountain range in Norway in 1932, but unfortunately these animals didn't last very long at all. These animals were taken out directly by humans, as they were hunted to extinction during World War II. This is one of the stranger reasons as to why a reintroduction has failed, but thankfully the people of Norway did not give up on the musk ox. A second attempt was made in 1947, and this reintroduction was successful. This original population expanded into Sweden in 1971, but these animals still aren't out of the woods yet. Their population in Europe still remains small, and they are running into many problems that are common with animal reintroductions. Because only a small number of these animals were reintroduced, there is very little genetic variation. This of course means that there is a lot of inbreeding, and this is why these animals have struggled to establish themselves. As well as this, they are also seen as a tourist attraction, and this means that they are often disturbed. This leads to the animals using up valuable energy, and this can affect how often they choose to mate. So even though this reintroduction failed the first time around, I'm glad that it worked on the second attempt, and hopefully in the future there will be a healthier population. For our next species, we will be heading over to Mexico, as we will be taking a look at the thick-billed parrot. The thick-billed parrot is a medium-sized parrot, and it's endemic to Mexico. This wasn't always the case as it was once found in the southwestern United States, but they completely vanished from this area in the 1920s. One of the main reasons behind this local extinction was hunting, as they were hunted for food by miners and woodsmen. Their habitat was also destroyed by the logging industry, and today they are currently listed as endangered. Really, we are lucky that these birds are still around, as they could have disappeared altogether. 
The Carolina parakeet was another North American parrot, and this bird went extinct in 1918. The final parakeet died not long after his partner in Cincinnati Zoo, and he died in the same enclosure as Martha, who was the last passenger pigeon to have ever existed. This bird had a very similar story to the thick-billed parrot, but the thick-billed parrot was able to survive in Mexico. Because these animals are iconic North American birds, many people wanted them to be reintroduced across their former range. Because of this, they were reintroduced into Arizona in the 1980s, but unfortunately this reintroduction was unsuccessful. They were reintroduced into the mountains of southeastern Arizona, but the animals that were reintroduced were captive bred. This meant that they were not used to dealing with predators, and large numbers of these birds were taken out by goshawks. Because of this failure, the effort was abandoned in 1993, and the last of the introduced parrots was seen in 1995. This story really is tragic as these birds are endangered, but plans were put in place in 2020 to try again. Hopefully the second attempt will be successful, as it would be amazing to see these birds in the US once again. For our final species, we can stay in North America, but we will be heading north. The Canadian lynx is one of four species of lynx, and it roams over a large area of northern North America. These cats are known for being shy and elusive, and they are expert ambush predators. Canadian lynx are extremely territorial and solitary, and when they meet each other in the wild, they have some interesting vocalizations. <coughs> These animals depend heavily on snowshoe hares for food, and the number of snowshoe hares in an area usually correlates with the number of Canadian lynx. The Canadian lynx used to have a much larger range, but its numbers have declined dramatically in the last century. They were once found much further south, but thanks to over-trapping and habitat loss, they were pushed north. This is why there have been many Canadian lynx reintroduction programs, and some of these programs have been a success, and some of them have failed. One of these failures occurred in New York, where 83 lynx were released into the Adirondack Mountains. This population never became self-sustaining, but it's not exactly clear why the effort was unsuccessful. It seems as though this project was mismanaged, as the lynx were not closely monitored. The fate of many of the animals is unknown, and they could have been poached or taken out by disease. It's also possible that they could have disappeared due to competition, as there is a healthy population of coyotes in New York. This story just goes to show why it's important to monitor reintroduced animals, and hopefully the same mistake won't be made again. If you think you know of any other stories that could have made it into this video, then let me know down in the comments below. But thanks for watching, and until next time, Goodbye.